My dear General, your letter of the 13th caused me the most painful solicitude. You remarked that if there be not a favorable change, I will write tomorrow. I am greatly relieved by your not writing, as it satisfies to me that my dear sister and William are better. God grant that all of you may be well ere this reaches you. If I could act as my feelings dictate, I would be with you now and remain until spring, but my health, as well as other considerations, render it impossible. George gives me inexpressible grief and concern. He has, for two months, acted in the most exemplary manner, but it was apparent something rendered him unhappy. He told me a few days since this cause of his anxiety, and indeed, I have just received letters confirming his statements. He has, at different times and places in his fits of intemperance, involved himself and drawn for double pay. This has been officially made known, and he is miserable in consequence of not being able as yet to raise the necessary sum to pay these accounts. A gentleman in Louisville offered to loan him, on the best terms, a sum sufficient to pay all his debts, and upon going to Louisville to receive this sum, he was informed by the gentleman who offered the loan that very unexpectedly and much to his chagrin, the money he intended for the colonel had been loaned the day previous. At the instance of the gentleman, the colonel left here Thursday for Lexington to negotiate a loan. He's expected to return Sunday, and as he has not yet arrived, I apprehend he will not succeed. He seems more thoughtful and penitent than I have ever known him to be, and says if he can but once get free from the shameful embarrassment which his vile debaucheries have occasioned, that he will soon be what he ought long to have been. I sincerely pray it may be so, but his past promises make me doubt it. Confidentially speaking, I got a letter from William, enclosing one from Mr. Wilkins, in which he, Mr. Wilkins, expresses the great pain it gave him to state the colonel had drawn double pay for the months of January, February, March, and April. William writes that to save the colonel, he would pay one half if I would pay the other half. And I wrote to him that I would inform Mr. Wilkins immediately that he might consider the debt as paid. After all I have paid the colonel, I determined never to pay another cent for him, but here is a case involving the reputation of one's family, and I therefore cannot hesitate about making an effort to save him. The colonel not being here, and receiving these letters during his absence renders me truly unhappy. This is Christmas. Merry Christmas. To me, it has been a day of gloom and melancholy forebodings. Give my love to Anne and my nieces and nephews, and sincerely hoping that all of you are well, I remain, dear General, sincerely yours, John Cron.